The bottom line case for adopting no first use policies or their sole purpose functional equivalent is not that they're an end in themselves or will by themselves bring an end to the terrible existential risk to life on this planet as we know it that will continue so long as any nuclear weapons remain. It is rather that they're an extremely important contributor, no first use policies, an extremely important contributor to immediate nuclear risk reduction, an important contributor to the necessary ongoing process of delegitimizing, very important contributor to the delegitimization of nuclear weapons in policymakers thinking. And they're an important contributor to maintaining a global commitment to non-proliferation, and they're an absolutely necessary way station on the road to ultimate elimination. We do have a long way to go in achieving a safer and saner nuclear weapons free world, but getting the United States and the other reluctant nuclear arms starters to embrace first use would certainly be one hell of a good place to start. Thank you. As former president of the UN General Assembly, I had the opportunity to witness the high level of support for the abolition of nuclear weapons from most member states and from civil society around the world. Yet, nuclear weapons remain with us, despite their threat to civilization and to our common goals of stabilizing the climate, building forward better after the pandemic, and achieving sustainable development. The adoption of no first use policies would be a concrete step forward uh, to uh, wean the nuclear arm and allied states from their reliance on nuclear weapons. It would help move them to join us in focusing more effectively on meeting real human security to protect current and future generations. The World Future Council and I join you in this initiative. Bonjour, je suis Bernard Norlin, ancien général d'aviation français, ancien commandant de la force aérienne de combat et aujourd'hui vice-président de l'association Initiative pour le désarmement nucléaire, IDN. Notre objectif est de promouvoir en France et auprès des autres puissances nucléaires un désarmement nucléaire multilatéral, progressif et équilibré afin de contribuer à la construction d'un monde plus sûr et plus pacifique. Le risque de guerre nucléaire est devenu plus élevé que jamais depuis la guerre froide. Avec la course aux armements, entre grandes puissances, l'introduction de nouvelles armes et technologies déstabilisantes et l'abaissement du seuil de recours aux armes nucléaires. Affirmer aujourd'hui que l'arme nucléaire permet de dissuader une attaque conventionnelle, chimique, biologique ou cyber, est non seulement illusoire, mais surtout dangereux. En attendant l'élimination des armes nucléaires, seul moyen d'éliminer le risque de leur emploi, instaurer la doctrine du non-emploi en premier permettrait de réduire ce risque et faciliter la négociation d'accords de désarmement conformément aux engagements des puissances nucléaires. Si cette politique, déjà suivie par la Chine et l'Inde, était adoptée par les autres puissances nucléaires, y compris la France, il serait possible alors de consacrer les énormes ressources englouties dans l'armement nucléaire aux autres besoins de sécurité de l'humanité. Hello, I'm Jonathan Granoff, president of the Global Security Institute. Pledges not to use nuclear weapons first will dramatically reduce the risk of the use of nuclear weapons in a crisis situation that could lead to the precipitous use of these horrific devices. In June of 1980, a computer chip that cost less than a dollar made an error and it, and it indicated, our computers indicated Thousands of nuclear warheads were headed for the United States from the Soviet Union. And in September of 1983, a misreading of a cloud formation by satellites and computers in the then Soviet Union indicated a full-scale launch of a nuclear attack by the United States. And it, but for the intervention of one man, Stanislav Petrov, 
over 10,000 nuclear warheads would have rained down upon the United States, and we wouldn't be here today. There are numerous examples of such critically dangerous situations, the risks of which would be dramatically reduced if there were pledges not to use nuclear weapons first. There are many other good reasons for no first use pledges, but reducing risk is certainly a sufficient reason to pledge not to use nuclear weapons first. We want a world in which there are no nuclear weapons. But as we move toward that world, let's make sure we don't end this precious world. Thank you very much.